I've decided to talk about a very recent paper. It's about charge separation, charge recombination, and interstitial processing of pyrrolein monomide carbazole diets. And I would like to emphasize the most important findings of the paper. And starting with an introduction, the triplet photosensitizers are crucial in a lot of different applications. For a good photosensitizer, a good yield of inter-system crossing is important to produce efficient triplet states. Normally, the inter-system crossing relies on the heavy atom effect, which brings high costs and also toxicity with it. It is a challenge to to find simple structures without heavy atoms in it that are also produce efficient intersystem crossing. It is proposed to have charge recombination induced intersystem crossing, and previous research stated that directly connected donor acceptor diets can have a good intersystem crossing. For these diets, there is a requirement they need to be orthogonal to each other, the donor and acceptor. Because the electron transfer is then accompanied by a molecular orbital angular momentum change, which compensates uh, for the spin orbit angular momentum change. This results in intersystem crossing with uh, fast kinetics on the picosecond timescale, and this is called spin orbit charge transfer intersystem crossing. Well, this SOCT intersystem crossing is especially interesting for triplet photosensitizers because there is no need for a large separation between the donor and the acceptor. And the donor and acceptor can easily be changed to connect with a visible light harvesting chromophore. Uh, this brings me to the research question I would like to discuss. There's limited research done in this area, but I would like to answer the question, what is the relation between the mutual orientation of the donor and the acceptor and the SOCT intersystem crossing? First, I think it's a good idea to look at the structures that were used. As the acceptor, they used their pyrrolein monoamides. They used it in previous research as well, and they, they liked it. And it's also the visible light harvesting chromophore. And as a donor, they used carbazol, which is a typical donor, but it's not used in this expertise. And they wanted to tune the electron donating ability by introducing terpetyl groups at the carbazol unit. And as you can see, these, the donor and acceptor are connected via a single uh, CN bond, but they also wanted to study uh, what happens if with the CC linkage. This was directly done, but also with the intervening phenyl group. And as a reference, they used a PMI with bromide, which is a heavy atom. First, I would like to discuss some DFT calculations that were performed. After the geometry optimization, uh, you can look at the frontier molecular orbitals, and you can see for the HOMO that it's mostly localized on the carbosol unit. Well, for the LUMO, it's mostly localized on the PMI. There is an overlap between the HOMA and LUMO, which produces the compensation of the molecular orbital angular momentum change, which will reduce the intersystem crossing and thus has an effect on the SFCT intersystem crossing efficiency. This can be used in a general way to study SOCT inter-system crossing in triplet photosensitizers. They also wanted to study the influence of the geometry on the, on the inter-system crossing. And they did calculations for the ground state potential energy curves of the diets of the torsion of the, about the linker. At room temperature, the dihedral angle between the donor and acceptor isn't strictly perpendicular in this, these cases. And if you can see here for the CN-linked diets, the torsion barrier is lower than the barrier for the thermal energy at room temperature, which results in a wide range of geometries that can be adopted by the diets. If you look at the CC-linked diets, this uh, torsion is higher in energy and results in a more fixed, more fixed geometry. The wide range of geometries is, uh, reduces the intersystem crossing. Uh, they also studied the absorption spectra. They compared the bromide diet with the CN linked diets, and they found that for the CN diets, the spectrum is less structured, and there's also a red shift observed. And this is an indication for the coupling, the electron coupling between the donor and the acceptor. And this is especially clear for the more electron donating carbosol with terpetyl groups. They also studied the fluorescence emission spectra in different solvents. They again compared the bromide diet with the CN linked diets. And they found that for the bromide diet, the changes in solvents is not very significant. But for the other two, it is. It, you can see that the intensity decreases strongly especially for the terpetyl group diet, but also there's a redshift, the band is broadened, 
So these are all indications for a solvent effect. And they also wanted to study the triplet state formation. They did this with singlet oxygen photosensitization in different solvents. And you can see that for the bromide, quantum mutes differ in the different solvents, but not very largely, so not very significantly. So the mechanism for intersystem crossing is for this diet proposed via the heavy atom effect. But for the other solvents, the change in the quantum mutes are very large, differ a lot, and therefore the mechanism is proposed to be via the spin orbit charge transfer into system crossing, uh, which is also be, be known to be a solvent, polar solvent dependent. This brings me to the last bit I would like to discuss, and that's the results of the femtosecond transient absorption spectroscopy, of which the Jablonski diagram was constructed. And I first would like to have a look at the left diagram, uh, which is the one of the carbazole terbutyl group. You can see that the charge transfer state is of similar energy as the T2 state which can be used to rationalize the solvent-dependent SSCT into system crossing, because previous research has proposed that the existence of a TN state of similar energy levels as the charge transfer state are uh, beneficial for the SSCT into system crossing. So it is proposed that the inter-system crossing occurs via the charge transfer state to the T2 state, followed by internal conversion to the T1 state. However, the situation changed without the, ter the electron donating terpentyl Group, the charge transfer states increase a bit because they're a bit less stabilized and the T2 states increase significantly, it, which makes it impossible for intersystem crossing to occur from the charge transfer state to the T2 state. So it's only possible in highly polar solvents to have intersystem crossing between the charge transfer state to the T1 state. And this brings me to my conclusion that there is uh, found a solvent polarity dependence for the triplet state formation, which is characteristic for the SOCT intersystem crossing. The SOCT intersystem crossing can be rationalized by confinement of the frontier molecular orbitals, by potential energy surface of the torsion of the dehedral angle between the donor and the acceptor, different electron donating abilities of the carbosol units, and also via the energy levels of the charge transfer. As outlook, it is useful to use these results uh, in fundamental photochemistry of compact electron donor acceptor diets, but also uh, for the design of heavy atom free triplet photosensitizers. And I would like to thank you, and I hope I can answer all your questions.